Hello, my name is Jack Harlan. I'm the president and general manager of D&D Machine and Hydraulics. All of us at D&D want to thank you for the interest that you've expressed in our fine line of hydraulic submersible pump products. We would like to take a few minutes of your time with this video to discuss some important issues concerning our pumping equipment. First, we will take you step by step through the startup of our diesel driven units, our hydraulic line connection, and troubleshooting procedures that should simplify the day-to-day -day operation of our pumping equipment. We will show you examples of blown or leaking seals and or broken mount ears on the Vickers hydraulic motor that drives the pump head. These are the most common problems that can occur as a direct result of improperly connecting the hydraulic line between the power unit and the pump head. In the second portion of our video, we will follow our repair mechanics as they tear down and repair a pump head that was damaged by improper hydraulic line connection. We hope that you find this video both informative and useful. Thank you. Correct operation and routine maintenance of your digester pump and power unit is critical to safe and efficient operation of the unit. Please be sure to follow the simple procedures shown in this video as well as the procedures outlined in your digester pump and power unit maintenance manuals. Prior to operating your digester pump and power unit, visually inspect the overall condition of the equipment. Make sure the power unit is securely positioned on a level surface and is free from obstructions. With the power unit off, check the hydraulic oil level. Be sure that the hydraulic tank supply valve is in the open position. Check that the pump control valve is in the open position also. Next, check the engine oil level. Be sure the power unit is fueled up and the fuel level is adequate for the amount of pumping that needs to be done. Moving to the front of the power unit, with the engine cool to the touch, Visually check the radiator water level by removing the radiator cap. Be sure to secure the cap after checking the coolant level. Now, check the engine belts for wear and tension. Loose belts inhibit the optimum performance of the power unit and a broken belt can cause lengthy delays. Check the battery connections and fluid level in the battery cells. Finally, if the unit is going to be transported on the highway, check the tires, safety chains, trailer connections, lights, and corner jacks. All should be set and secured for movement on the road. Once all the pre-start check items have been completed, it is time to start the power unit. For additional information on these items, please refer to the documentation that came with your power unit and pump. Prior to starting the power unit, be sure you have completed the pre-start checklist to ensure safe and efficient operation of the power unit and pump. The engine start procedure begins with opening the hydraulic tank suction service valve. Prime the fuel pump with a couple of pushes on the priming plunger. Open the water pump control valve, then press and hold the shutdown system override button on the control panel while pressing the engine start button. The override button must be held in after the engine starts and until the oil pressure comes online usually 10 to 15 seconds. Your D&D power unit is equipped with four Murphy shutdown systems. The automatic safety features are designed to protect yourself as well as the power unit and pump. Bypassing or disconnecting any of these systems could result in serious injury or damage to the power unit, pump, or other equipment. The Murphy shutdown systems included on the power unit are engine high coolant temperature shutdown, this sensor will automatically shut the engine off in the event of a high coolant temperature situation. Hydraulic oil, high oil temperature shutdown. This shuts the engine down in the event of an overheat condition 
of the hydraulic oil. Low hydraulic fluid level shutdown shuts the system down in the event of a loss of hydraulic oil in the hydraulic oil reservoir. Low engine oil pressure shutdown shuts the engine down if the oil pressure falls below a preset pressure. After starting the power unit, the Murphy shutdown systems can be checked for proper operation. Be sure that the engine shuts down in response to test inputs on each of the sensors. For more information on the Murphy shutdown systems, please refer to your power unit manual. The following pressure testing is to be performed with the two hydraulic lines to the power unit disconnected. With the engine running and pressure stabilized at idle speed, slowly bring up the engine RPM while at the same time closing the water pump control valve. This procedure allows the relief valve setting to be checked as well as the condition of the PTO pump. The pressure should hold steady at approximately 2250 PSI, indicating that there is no internal leakage occurring in the PTO pump or relief valve. Shut down the power unit after completing these tests. If you experience any type of malfunction while performing the power unit check, immediately shut the system off and refer to your maintenance documentation or feel free to contact DND for technical assistance. Connect the two hydraulic lines to the power unit. Be sure to securely tighten both lines until the quick coupler meets the line indicator on the mating fitting. The tighten line is engraved into the fitting and is indicated by two arrows. Repeat this procedure at the pump head, tightening both quick connectors to the tighten line. With the hydraulic lines securely connected and the pump head sitting on the ground in a level position, Start the engine and bring the system online. The circulating pressure on a dry pump head should be 100 to 500 PSI. This test allows the low pressure side of the system to be checked for leakage. Open the control valve to stop the rotation of the pump impeller. Install a wrench on the flat portions of the stub shaft in order to lock up the pump and simulate a load. Slowly bring the system back online. System pressure should reach 2250 PSI. This test allows the high pressure side of the pump to be checked as well as the pump shaft seal. The following procedure is used to demonstrate what happens if hoses are connected incorrectly and operating procedures are not followed. This procedure is meant as a demonstration only and should not be attempted under any circumstances. Failure to connect the quick coupler completely can result in serious damage to the pump head. In this demonstration, you can see that the return line quick coupler is not tightened to the correct position. Notice the distance between the coupler and the tighten line indicated by the connection arrows. Watch what happens as the power unit is started and pressure is applied to the pump head. The reason this type of malfunction occurs is because the DND bearing carrier housing is normally lubricated with the case drain oil from the hydraulic motor. This is low pressure oil, 100 PSI, and low flow oil. This oil normally passes out through the return line due to a special design change modification of the hydraulic motor developed through testing by DND. If the return line flow is blocked for any reason, such as a construction vehicle parked on the hydraulic line, a kinked line, a damaged line, or a hose not coupled correctly, the oil in the bearing carrier will pressurize very quickly and will either damage the pump seal or the lower pump housing. The system does have a relief valve, but due to the small volume oil capacity of the carrier and the length of the hydraulic line, the relief valve cannot react quickly enough to vent the excess pressure and prevent overpressurizing the pump head.